transitioning into the life of beloved actor Dick Van Dyke. It's striking to consider that someone known for bringing joy to countless faces has experienced so much hardship himself. With nearly a century under his belt, the actor's journey has been marred by profound sorrow and adversity. If you're keen on learning more about him, stay tuned as we delve into the less glamorous aspects of this icon story. Growing up during the Great Depression, financial struggles were a constant presence in Van Dyke's early years. Despite these challenges, he discovered his passion for performing, eventually leading him to pursue a career in entertainment. However, success didn't come easily. Along the way, he faced numerous setbacks and disappointments. As we explore further, you'll see how resilience became one of his most defining traits. As his professional life began to take shape, personal relationships would also pose significant trials for the actor. From complicated family dynamics to romantic entanglements tainted by betrayal, Van Dyke's real-life experiences often mirrored the dramatic plots seen on stage and screen. In fact, some might argue that they surpassed them in terms of emotional intensity. Keep watching to gain insight into these complex chapters of his life. Moreover, amidst the highs and lows, mental health issues cast lengthy shadows over Van Dyke's existence. Battles with depression and alcoholism tested his fortitude, but ultimately served as catalysts for growth and transformation. Join us as we examine this aspect of his journey, shedding light on the strength found in vulnerability. Throughout it all, Dick Van Dyke persevered, remaining steadfast in his dedication to both his craft and those he loved. His ability to overcome obstacles serves as a testament to the human spirit, proving that even in the face of immense difficulty, hope prevails. Tune in to discover the true depth behind the man who has brought smiles to millions worldwide. Born on a chilly winter day, December 13, 1925, in West Plains, Missouri, Dick Van Dyke's story begins amidst the picturesque landscapes of the Midwest. He was the proud son of Hazel Victoria McCord, a hardworking stenographer, and Lauren Wayne Cookie Van, a diligent salesman. The Van Dyke family tree boasted a rich blend of heritages, Dutch, English, Irish, and Scottish, with roots extending all the way back to John Alden, one of the esteemed Mayflower passengers. Growing up in Danville, Illinois, young Dick shared a close bond with his younger brother, Jerry Van, who also followed in his footsteps as an actor. Together they graced television screens as on-screen siblings in The Van Show. As children, they reveled in the wholesome enjoyment of small-town America, building memories that would last a lifetime. Throughout his adolescent years, Dick Van Dyke roamed the halls of Danville High School, embracing various extracurricular activities. His melodious voice found its home in the a cappella choir, while his flair for dramatics flourished in the school's theatrical club. Little did he know that these passions would ignite the fire for a successful career in entertainment. Interestingly enough, Dick also considered devoting himself to the ministry during his senior year. However, fate seemed to have other plans for him. As World War II unfolded, Dick Van Dyke decided to put his education on hold to serve his country. Initially rejected by the U.S. Army Air Forces due to his low weight, he refused to let setbacks deter him. Eventually, he secured his place in the service as a radio announcer before transferring to the Special Services Unit. Here, he captivated fellow servicemen and women with his talent for entertaining troops stationed throughout the continental United States. Even though the war ended in 1946, the camaraderie and sense of purpose it instilled in Dick remained etched in his heart forever. Once discharged, Dick resumed his educational journey and received his high school diploma in 2004, a remarkable milestone achieved later in life. These intriguing glimpses into the actor's past reveal the multi-layered tapestry of his upbringing and military experience that shaped the legend known today as Dick Van Dyke. In the late 1940s, Dick Van Dyke launched his career in entertainment as a radio disc jockey at WDIZ in his hometown of Danville, Illinois. During this time, he honed his radio broadcasting skills, which would prove invaluable in his future endeavors. Later, in 1947, Van Dyke formed a comedy duo called Eric and Van with Phil Erickson, a fellow pantomime performer. Their act consisted of performing a mime routine while lip cinching to 78 RPM records, much to the delight of their audience. This dynamic duo toured the West Coast nightclub circuit before settling in Atlanta, Georgia. Once in Atlanta, the pair brought their act to television, hosting a locally produced program titled The Merry Mutes. The show featured original skits and musical numbers, highlighting their comedic timing and mime abilities. However, Van Dyke's television career didn't stop there. 
He soon moved to New Orleans, joining Wed's SU TV Channel 6 NBC as a solo comedian. Later, he became the master of ceremonies for a comedy program. His big break came in 1954, when he appeared on the national network television show Chance of a Lifetime, hosted by Dennis James. Over the next few years, Van Dyke guest starred on various shows like The Phil Silver Show, and both The Pat Boone Chevy Showroom on ABC, and The Polly Bergen Show on NBC. A crucial moment in Van Dyke's television journey arrived when a former Army buddy, now an executive at CBS Television, recommended him to the network. As a result, Van Dyke signed a seven-year contract with CBS, leading to a prominent role as the anchor on the CBS morning show alongside esteemed journalist Walter Cronkite. Thus, Van Dyke's career trajectory soared, thanks to connections made along the way and his innate talent for making people laugh. In November 1959, the talented Dick Van Dyke made his Broadway debut in The Girls Against the Boys at the Alvin Theater. This review brought together notable performances by Van Dyke, Shelley Berman, Burt LaPerl, Nancy Walker, and others gracing the Broadway scene with a series of spirited acts. Although the production only ran for 16 performances, from November 2nd to 14th, it provided an excellent platform for Van Dyke to display his charisma and versatility. These early stages of Van Dyke's career laid the groundwork for his lasting success in the entertainment industry, which includes radio, television, and even esteemed venues like Broadway. Beginning as a local radio DJ, he rose to become a national television personality before making his way onto the Broadway stage. This journey marked the start of a phenomenal career filled with captivating performances that have enthralled audiences for decades. Dick Van Dyke has built a reputation as one of the most joyful and delightfully silly personalities in the entertainment industry. Despite playing the more somber role of medical examiner Dr. Mark Sloan in the television series Diagnosis Murder, it is his assured slightly goofy charm and exceptional skill at physical comedy that have become his trademark. Throughout his illustrious career, spanning over six decades, the actor has been associated with some of the most memorable roles and performances in both film and television. His work often reflects his natural effervescence and knack for making people laugh. One of his earliest breakthrough roles came in the form of the titular character in Bye Bye Birdie, a musical film adaptation released in 1963. In the movie, he played the part of Albert Peterson, a songwriter who finds himself caught up in the whirlwind romance between his girlfriend Rosie Alvarez and rock star Conrad Birdie. With his boyish good looks and impeccable comedic timing, Van Dyke shone brightly alongside seasoned actors like Anne Margaret and Maureen Stapleton. Another highlight in his career was undoubtedly when he took on the iconic role of Caractacus Potts in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in 1968. Based on Ian Fleming's novel, the family-friendly fantasy adventure followed the story of an eccentric inventor named Caractacus, who creates a magical flying car along with his two children Jeremy and Jemima. Throughout the course of their adventures, they cross paths with various quirky characters, including truly scrumptious, Baron Bomberst, and the Child Catcher. Once again, Van Dyke brought boundless energy and humor to the screen while captivating audiences with his wholesome performance. Moreover, many fans fondly remember him as Rob Petrie in the eponymously titled sitcom, The Dick Van Dyke Show, which originally ran from 1961 through 1966. As a writer for The Alan Brady Show, Rob navigated both professional challenges and hilarious misunderstandings at home alongside wife Laura, son Richie, and neighbors Jerry Helper and Millie Helper. Despite the occasional dramatic turn, such as his stint on Diagnosis Murder, it is clear that Dick Van Dyke will always be remembered first and foremost for his contributions to light-hearted cinema and television. Time after time, he demonstrates how pure enjoyment can resonate deeply with viewers across generations, solidifying his place as a timeless entertainer. To witness his magnetic presence on screen remains a true pleasure even today. However, behind the cheerful persona lies a struggle with extreme shyness that the actor faced throughout his life. In a 2016 interview with Entertainment Tonight, he shared how difficult it was for him to approach strangers. He mentioned that he couldn't talk to people easily, which was a significant challenge for him. To manage his crippling bashfulness, he turned to alcohol. He found that having a drink helped him relax and made it easier to connect with others. This temporary solution seemed to bring down the walls that his shyness had built around him, making him feel more social and approachable. Yet, as often happens, the remedy turned out to be worse than the problem. 
his dependence on alcohol as a way to cope with social situations eventually led to serious issues. This struggle highlighted a less visible side of his journey, showing that even those who appear so lively and engaging can face personal battles that are not immediately apparent. Moreover, during a 2016 appearance on Oprah, Where Are They Now?, the actor shared a deeply personal and candid story about his struggle with shyness and the unintended consequences of trying to overcome it with alcohol. He revealed that his initial attempts to combat his shyness led him down a path of addiction, describing it as a lengthy and challenging battle. It took a considerable amount of time for him to overcome his addiction, with a realization that hit him hard in middle age. He faced the difficult truth that he had been using alcohol as a crutch to cope with his social anxiety. Surprisingly, he discovered addictive tendencies within himself that he had not been aware of earlier. His drinking habits escalated over time. Rather than enjoying just one martini, he found himself consuming three or four. This increase in his drinking, combined with the shyness he was trying to suppress, ultimately led to his struggle with addiction. Despite these challenges, the actor managed to turn his life around and overcome his addiction. His decision to speak openly about his personal struggles has had a positive effect on many people. On the Bullseye with Jesse Thorne podcast, he mentioned receiving letters from individuals inspired by his story. Many have expressed that his honesty encouraged them to confront their own drinking problems and seek help. He takes pride in knowing that his confession has given strength and support to others who once felt ashamed of admitting their issues with alcohol. However, the actor faced significant challenges in his life, particularly with alcohol addiction. In a 2013 interview with The Telegraph, as reported by The Fix, he opened up about how this struggle affected his mental health. He shared that he had reached a dark place, feeling deep despair and battling severe depression. The toll of addiction was so intense that he even contemplated self-harm. He described the emotional pain by saying, I was in deep trouble. You get suicidal and think you just can't go on. It was just terrible. His honesty about his battles serves as a powerful reminder that mental health issues, such as depression, can affect anyone, regardless of their success or the public's adoration. It emphasizes the reality that even beloved figures can navigate the difficult terrain of mental health challenges. In the midpoint of his career, the actor Dick Van Dyke faced a significant challenge, his struggle with alcohol and depression. However, a turning point occurred when he grew tired of alcohol itself. The allure of drinking faded, replaced by unpleasant physical sensations like dizziness and nausea upon consumption. He considered this change a blessing, marking a critical shift in his relationship with alcohol. No longer did he find pleasure in drinking. Van Dyke acknowledged that overcoming his addiction was not a solo endeavor. At different stages in his life, he sought assistance from various sources, including rehabilitation centers and Alcoholics Anonymous. These support networks were instrumental in his path toward recovery and sobriety. His personal resolve combined with their aid enabled him to escape the grasp of alcohol addiction, paving the way for a more optimistic and rewarding existence. In a 2010 interview with Craig Ferguson, the legendary actor Dick Van Dyke shared a fascinating tale of a real-life brush with danger at sea. While the incident may sound like a scene straight out of a movie, the account comes directly from the horse's mouth. The story begins with the actor dozing off on a surfboard, only to awaken far from the security of the shoreline. Realizing his precarious position, panic set in as he faced the vast expanse of water stretching out before him. He recalled being out of sight of the land, and the gravity of the situation soon became apparent. As the actor frantically paddled to make his way back to shore, he sensed movement nearby. At first, he thought he had fallen prey to circling sharks, but fortunately, he could not have been more wrong. Instead, friendly faces appeared, in the form of a pot of porpoises. These intelligent creatures seemed to recognize the actor's plight and took it upon themselves to come to his aid. What followed next was nothing short of miraculous. With an impressive display of instinctual behavior and compassion, the porpoises positioned themselves alongside Van Dyke's board, nudging both him and the vessel gently toward the coast. This unexpected act of kindness proved crucial in guiding the stranded man back to safety saving him from what could have become a dire scenario. This uplifting encounter between human and porpoise serves as a reminder that sometimes help can arrive in the most unlikely forms. Although some may dismiss the story due to its fantastical nature, it remains essential to remember that animals have shown acts of altruism towards people before, particularly among dolphins, a species closely related to porpoises. Thus, although the event seems extraordinary, it isn't impossible. 
Moreover, just a few years later in August 2013, the entertainment legend found himself in a situation that was far less poetic, but equally harrowing. His official Twitter account shared a photo of a completely destroyed Jaguar sports car, with the humorous caption used Jag for sale real cheap. However, this was no mere social media joke. At the age of 87, he was driving on Route 101 in California when his sports car suddenly caught fire. Despite the seriousness of the situation, he managed to pull over to the side of the road. However, he was unable to exit the smoking vehicle on his own and had to be rescued by passersby. TMZ, the first to report on the incident, noted that the car was already engulfed in flames by the time he was pulled to safety, indicating just how perilous the situation had become. Fortunately, despite the intense flames and urgency, he emerged from the burning vehicle unscathed. His humorous tweet about the incident not only showcased his impeccable comedic timing, but also showed his resilience and ability to maintain a sense of humor, even in a potentially life-threatening situation. Even at the impressive age of 89, the actor Dick Van Dyke demonstrated an unwavering dedication to fitness. According to the Chicago Tribune, he maintained a rigorous exercise routine, hitting the gym every day. His commitment to staying active and prioritizing his health was truly admirable. The actor's enthusiasm for physical fitness extended beyond his personal workouts. In fact, he penned a book specifically focused on advanced age fitness, highlighting his passion for maintaining a healthy lifestyle well into one's later years. This publication served as a testament to his deep appreciation for taking care of himself through regular exercise and proper self-care. For those approaching their golden years, Dick Van Dyke's story offers inspiration and motivation to stay committed to fitness goals. By continuing to challenge themselves physically, seniors can enjoy improved overall health, increased energy levels, and a higher quality of life during their retirement years. Just like the legendary actor, it's essential to embrace an active lifestyle and understand its importance in our lives. Renowned actor Dick Van Dyke struggled with a significant smoking habit throughout his life. His relationship with cigarettes went beyond casual, with the Washington Post reporting that he was a heavy smoker going through as many as three packs a day. He admitted to being addicted to nicotine, describing cigarettes as the worst of all addictions. Despite numerous attempts to quit, breaking free from his dependency proved to be an incredibly challenging endeavor for the actor. However, a pivotal moment came when a doctor showed him an x-ray revealing scarring on his lungs due to his smoking habit. This confronting image served as a wake-up call, spurring him to take immediate action and finally kick his smoking habit for good. Although Van Dyke successfully quit smoking, the consequences of his past addiction continued to affect him. Reports indicate that he grappled with lung-related health issues, experiencing bouts of pneumonia, and even suffering a collapsed lung at one point. Nonetheless, the actor's determination to overcome his addiction remains commendable. The loss of a loved one is always a painful experience, and for actor Dick Van Dyke, the passing of his longtime companion Michelle Triola in 2009 was no exception. At the age of 76, Triola's death was a significant and heartbreaking moment for Van Dyke, who had shared a lengthy and enduring connection with her, despite the fact that they were never legally married. Triola may be best known for her six-year relationship with actor Lee Marvin, but she had also adopted his last name during their time together. However, the absence of a legal marriage became a crucial factor in her life when their relationship ended in 1970 leading to a highly publicized legal battle over financial support. This landmark case ultimately shaped legal history by establishing the concept of palimony, which refers to financial support paid in cases where unmarried couples who cohabitate separate. Today, it is recognized as an essential legal precedent for similar cases. The emotional toll of Triola's passing was compounded for Van Dyke by the fact that his ex-wife had also passed away due to cancer in 2008. Despite being aware of Triola's lung cancer diagnosis, Van Dyke maintained an optimistic demeanor, even when she asked him about her prognosis directly. He later reflected on this challenging period, stating, When she asked me if she was going to die, I pretended I didn't know. The hardest acting I have ever done. Undoubtedly, this was a trying time for the veteran actor, marked by profound personal losses and complex emotions. Moreover, the actor faced a seven-year battle with a mysterious neurological disorder that caused a troubling heartbeat like sound inside his head. Despite numerous tests and treatments, he could not find a solution, and the condition only worsened, leading to extreme fatigue 
and a significant toll on his overall well-being. In 2013, he took to Twitter to ask for help, sharing his struggles with followers. His tweet read, My head bangs every time I lay down. I've had every test come back that I'm perfectly healthy. Anybody got any ideas? This public call for assistance sparked interest and concern among his fan base and the medical community. A few weeks later, he had a breakthrough. A follow-up message on his Twitter revealed that the source of his discomfort was related to his famous smile. The vibrations from his titanium dental implants were the unexpected culprits behind the pounding sensation he had experienced for years. This discovery brought relief not just to him, but also to his worried followers, as it finally solved the mystery that had plagued him for so long. The issue with the dental implants highlighted how sometimes answers can come from the most surprising places, shedding light on a challenging health journey. In the early 1970s, the life of actor Dick Van Dyke was marred by a personal tragedy that stemmed from his own actions. His marriage to Margie Willett, which had lasted for more than two decades, came to an end due to a series of unfortunate events. Both Van Dyke and Willett struggled with addiction issues. He battled alcohol addiction while she became dependent on prescription drugs. This shared struggle was indicative of deeper troubles in their relationship. As Van Dyke's fame grew, and his lifestyle changed dramatically because of his success, it created a divide between him and Willett. He would later reflect on this trying phase in his life, admitting that their addictions were symptoms of bigger issues in their marriage. They were gradually drifting apart, despite efforts to salvage their union. Van Dyke made a fateful decision to deal with these challenges by engaging in an extramarital affair with Michelle Triola, who worked for his agent and used to be an actress herself. In hindsight, the actor openly acknowledged his wrongdoing and confessed to feeling overwhelmed by Gila Tennant by 1976. Van Dyke realized he needed to face up to reality and be honest about what transpired. Regrettably, this admission marked the beginning of the end for his marriage to Willett. Eventually, they chose to live separately before officially ending their marriage in 1984. Following her divorce from the actor, Margie Willett chose to lead a quiet and private life Focusing on her children and grandchildren, she decided against remarrying and embraced a way of living away from the spotlight. Her dedication to her family remained strong as she was a loving and supportive mother and grandmother. In 2007, Margie faced a tough diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Even while battling this illness, she showed great strength and courage. Tragically, the disease took her life in 2008. Although they had been apart for years, her passing deeply affected the actor. He spoke highly of her, saying she was the best thing that ever happened to him. Margie's memory is honored as a devoted mother and a supportive partner who stood by him through thick and thin. She played an essential role in his journey, often being consulted before he took on acting roles. Her influence reached even into his creative work. He wrote the song Put on a Happy Face during a time when she was feeling down. Moreover, Margie was featured in the actor's book, My Lucky Life In and Out of Show Business, which he dedicated to her. This book highlighted her significant influence and presence in his life. Her passing marked the end of a life filled with love and courage. Though she was not a celebrity herself, she played a vital role in the life of one of the most beloved entertainers. Her story remains one of love and strength, leaving a lasting impression on family and friends. In 1987, the life of actor Dick Van Dyke was marked by a terrible tragedy when his young granddaughter, Jessica Van, suffered a fatal complicaton related to a common childhood illness. At the time, Jessica, the daughter of Dyke's son Christian Van, and his wife, resided in Cleveland, Ohio with her mother and stepfather. Jessica had contracted chickenpox, and in an effort to relieve her symptoms, she started taking aspirin. However, things quickly took a dire turn when she developed Ray's syndrome, a rare and serious condition that can affect people recovering from a viral infection like chickenpox. Although the precise cause of this disorder remains unclear, it seems to have some connection to the usage of aspirin among younger individuals. Ray's syndrome results in the buildup of fat in various bodily organs, especially the brain, which subsequently increases pressure and causes harm. Unfortunately, there is currently no known remedy for this syndrome, and treatment mainly centers around averting or minimizing brain damage. Three days into her illness, Jessica grew disoriented and exhibited signs of delirium, prompting her family to seek immediate medical attention. Upon arrival at the hospital, doctors made the grim diagnosis. Jessica had indeed developed Ray's syndrome. Despite their best attempts, medical experts couldn't save Jessica, 
who died shortly after the diagnosis due to the progression of the disease. Her untimely passing left behind a trail of grief among her loved ones, including her grandfather, Dick Van Dyke, as well as her parents, stepmother, and two surviving siblings. Growing up, the actor now known as Dick Van Dyke found great joy in performing. This interest was ignited during his high school years, thanks to his participation in the a cappella choir and the school's drama club. These experiences allowed him to discover his love for entertaining others and solidified his desire to pursue a career in the industry. As a member of the a cappella choir, Dick Van Dyke developed a strong foundation in music and vocal performance. Singing in harmony with his peers taught him the importance of timing, pitch, and blending his voice with those around him. These skills would later prove invaluable when he began acting in musical theater productions. Simultaneously, his involvement in the drama club further fueled his passion for performing. Here, he honed his acting abilities through various stage roles, learning how to convincingly portray different characters and emotions. Additionally, participating in behind-the-scenes activities like set design, and prop management gave him valuable insights into the overall production process. These formative experiences played a significant role in shaping Dick Van Dyke's approach to his craft. By exposing him to various aspects of entertainment, they enabled him to develop a diverse skill set that has served him well throughout his illustrious career. To this day, he remains grateful for the opportunities provided by his high school choir and drama club, crediting them as the catalyst for his successful journey in the world of entertainment.